Hello, hello. Good morning, Ignited Church. How's everybody doing this morning? Yay. I had like two people respond. That's awesome. All right, this morning I'm just going to read a verse to you and kind of open up the service here. All right, the verse I'm going to read this morning is Jeremiah 29, 11, 12, and 13. It says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. This morning, as we come into worship, let's just not come into worship and be like, all right, yay, we're going to sing some songs. But let's come into worship and seek God. This is our time where we praise God, where we're like, all right, God, this is all about you. We give you glory. And you know what? He speaks to us. He speaks to us. So I'm going to pray, and we're going to open this up this morning, and we're going to have some fun. Dear Lord, we thank you, God, for how amazing you are. Jesus, we thank you for sending your son to die on the cross for our sins, Lord. Holy Spirit, we invite you into this place. We ask you to come and mess us up this morning, to wreck our hearts for you, Jesus. We give you free reign, Holy Spirit, to go in, to get that junk out, to get in those doors, Lord, that we've had closed for years, Lord to get that junk out, Lord, and fill it. Fill it with who you are, Lord, who you want us to be, Jesus. God, make us more like you. Lord, right now we just pray for our country. God, we pray for President Obama right now. Holy Spirit, we ask God that you would give him the answers, the decisions, the, the things he needs to fulfill the job that he's doing, Lord. God, we ask that he would make right decisions, Lord. God, that each and every person in our government, Lord God, would make right decisions, Lord, not based on, um, you know, money or not based on whatever, Lord, but based on morals, Lord Jesus, based on you, God. Holy Spirit, we thank you. Jesus, we thank you for the people that serve our country in the military, that have given their lives for us. We thank you for that. Thank you, Lord. Bless this country. Bless our lives. Bless this church, Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen.
say when sin is no more, yes, let the earth praise the name of the Lord. So let it rise, let it rise to the heavens. Come on, let it rise, let it rise to the heavens. Let it rise, let it rise to the heavens. have you guys here at Ignited Church this Memorial Day. Is anybody thankful for freedom? Yeah. You know, uh, freedom isn't free. Never has been. Jesus paid for ours. Somebody had to pay for it. Somebody always has to pay for freedom. But in Christ, he paid the ultimate price so that we can partake of freedom. Like many other people have. You know? So uh, I like to think of that on days like this. So Lord, we, we love you so much. Come and inhabit our praise today. This is all for you. We're here for you. We're not here to get our, our fix. We're here for Jesus. You guys know that? <clears throat> We're not here for a fix, our Jesus fix, or a weekly shot in the arm. We're here because Jesus deserves our worship. 
and he deserves our attention. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah to the King of glory, 
Hallelujah to the King of glory, the Lord strong and mighty, the one who paid for our freedom. Hallelujah to the King, hallelujah, hallelujah. Singing hallelujah, we're singing. a command for everything to come in alignment with the will of the Father. So when we begin to sing that word out, it's so much more than just a pretty 
poetic word, we're actually commanding everything in the supernatural realm to come in the will of the Father. Yeah. We're, com we're commanding our body to come in alignment with the Father. We're commanding our will to come in alignment with the Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're singing hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're singing hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Stir the stagnant waters of my soul. And merge me with your breath, which brings life. I don't have all the right words. That would provoke you to warn me any more than you already do. So won't you come, come like you promised, pour out your spirit, pour out Come like you promised. 
Call out your promise. Oh, Lord, remember your promises. We won't forget your promise. Because you love like a father. You love like a brother. You love like a liar. Fierce like no other. You violently chase me down to embrace me. Engulfing in who you are. Come on, sing that again. You love. You love like a father. You love like a brother. You love like a lion, fierce like no other. You violently chase me down to embrace me and call me in who you are. You love, you love like a father. You love like a brother. You love like a lion. Would you engulf us today in all that you are? And who you are is freedom. Who you are is love. Would you engulf us today in all that you are? In all that you are, Jesus. We want to know all that you are. We want to experience what you are. We want to taste and see what you are. We want to know what you are. We want to know how you love. We want to know how you think. We want to know how you breathe. Oh, so won't you come? Won't you come? So won't you come? Come like you promised. Pour out your spirit. Pour out.
March around every obstacle, for I am in the midst of your praises. I am in the midst of your praises, because I have come. No need to ask me anymore. I am here. I am here in this place. So reach out and take down what you need, because I love you and I want to rain upon my children. I love you and I want to rain upon my children. just need to take it ah, for I have come I've come like I've promised and I pour out my spirit you just need to take it for I have come pour out my spirit and Lord we receive it you know we receive it so daddy come pour out your spirit you know we receive it you know we receive it so daddy come pour out your spirit no So daddy come and pour out your spirit right now we receive it right now we receive it cause you're just that big you're just that big you're not contained in any boxes you can pour it out again he can pour it out again Cause he's never getting old Never running dry He's never running dry Everything we need According to his riches and glory He's everything we need Everything you need Mercy's new every morning, goodness every morning, following us every day, every day, every way. Yeah. Is anybody thankful for his spirit that doesn't just live in us, but it comes on us and dwells with us? Is anybody glad that the Lord doesn't do any boxes, that he is far bigger than our minds can conceive? God, we thank you right now that your spirit isn't just within us overflowing out, but it's above us flowing down, that it's around us, that we can partake of it, that it's not, you know, his spirit is inside of us, but it's not contained to just one thing. It's so big that he can give you all. It's one of those things, it's a mystery, that he can somehow give us all and yet give us room to grow. He can somehow put his spirit inside of us without measure, but yet still pour more on us. And that is, that is the beauty of God. Whatever you think you have him figured out or have, um, anytime you think you have him figured out, you've already put limits on him. He's just bigger than anything you can imagine. The best thing you can think of, he's better than that, yeah. infinitely. This is the way I think. This is why worship never gets old to me. This is why I can come out and do this every week. It's because the more I meditate on it, the more it draws me in. It's the beauty of mystery that really draws me into him. <clears throat> so blessed are those who thirst. And blessed are those who search for you. So I lift this cup of mine, trusting that you will turn 
Blessed are those who thirst, blessed are those who search for you. So I lift this cup of mine, trusting that you will turn my water. that were up there right there at the end I want you to look at them come and drink without measure just put the words up there I want, to, I want you to see this without measure it's his pleasure now listen to me very carefully this is not an orphanage This is Daddy's house. Oh, there we go. Now you can hear me. How many can hear me now? This is not an orphanage. It's Daddy's house. You are not a guest in this house. You're a child of the Most High God. Not only that, but you are God's favorite. You're his favorite child. Now, our mind cannot comprehend that because we, we would almost take that in a negative connotation. But it's extremely positive. God is so big, so wonderful, so powerful, that each of us is his favorite. You have been given a coat of many colors. You know what I'm referring to? The story of Joseph. He had, he had 11 brothers, but the father favored him and gave him the coat. All the other brothers were jealous. Guess what? Your coat is unique to you. You don't have to be jealous of anybody else's coat because yours is the best. Ha! You're not a stepchild. You're chosen of the Lord. He, he chose you. You're not the runt of the litter. You don't even have to ask. You can walk right over the refrigerator and get you something to eat. You can go right into the pantry and search the pantry. You are not a guest. You're a child of the Most High God. And you're in Abba's house today. Papa's. Daddy. You don't have to beg. I don't have to 
have to settle for peanut butter sandwiches, government food, certainly not government cheese. <laughs> You're not on food stamps. You're not on welfare. No handouts in this house. Our Heavenly Father is giving you the best of the best. Not to the exclusion of anybody else. He's not too busy. There's not just one pie and everybody has to share. You get your whole pie. Get the whole loaf. You don't have to wait till somebody else is finished. <laughs> you can be first in line this morning. <laughs> he loves you. And he's in a good mood. He doesn't even ask you if you want seconds. He just puts it on your plate. He's an extravagant God. He's not wasteful, but he is extra extravagant. And he can do exceedingly abundantly far over and above all that you could ask or think. He knows that you'd share whatever you got with anybody at any time. He knows you're a generous person. So that's why he lavishes his love on you. He wants to heal you today just because he wants to, not, not even because you've asked. He wants to bless you. He wants to deal with the financial pressures. He wants to deal with the broken relationships. He wants to take care of it all. Yeah. One scripture says that he removes the burdens and he destroys the yoke. Other scriptures indicate that he'll go with you through the fire, through the flood. Another scripture even says or indicates that when you are persecuted, when you are tormented, he's right there with you. And he'll pour his balm, his wine his salve into your wounds and heal you. So there's times he keeps us from getting wounded and there's times when he'll heal us when we are wounded. It's a dynamic in the word. I want everybody here this morning that you just you're in a tough place physically Emotionally, financially, you're in a tough place. Something's going on that's just keeping you from being totally free today. Just step out in the aisle and lift your hand. And as soon as somebody, one of our ministry team, puts their hand on your shoulder, put, put your hand down. So just step out now. If you're in a seat and you just physically can't stand or it's uncomfortable for you to stand, just raise your hand. Everybody look around, you see somebody's hand up. Put your hand on their shoulder. Anybody seated, look around. Somebody's seated. Put your hand on their shoulder. There's a lady right back there. Move out there. Over here. Good. As soon as they put their hand on your shoulder, put your hand down so I make sure I see that everybody's covered. Is there anybody else? Help me, congregation. Anybody else with their hand up? All right, let's all lift our hands right now. Let's sing this song. I want you to let this song wash over you. And those of you around them, 
just, just pray into them. Prophesy the goodness of God. Prophesy health and wholeness. Prophesy to them today. In Jesus' name. Come and drink with our men. We can drink. We can drink from a well that never runs dry. Drink from a well that never runs dry. We can drink from a well that never runs dry. We can drink from a well that never runs dry. We can drink from a well that never runs dry. We can drink from a well that never runs dry. We can drink from a well. one of them right there just us singing together and just ministering and prophesying one to another amen hallelujah put your hands together and bless the lord come on we bless you lord turn around smile at somebody and say happy memorials day welcome all of you on the webcast glad you've joined us we trust that you have received those prayers and declarations there in your home. Welcome everybody that's joined us here. Give the worship team a big God bless you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <clears throat> wow.
Today's a good day. It's a great day. We're going to have a lot of fun tonight. We have uh, close to 300 people signed up to come tonight. Plus, we don't know how many will show up because of the radio advertisements or the sign out front. So, uh, we're going to have fun. Amen. We'll show up and see what happens. We may have to pray God multiplies the food. <laughs> yeah, it's got to squirm in a little bit, but <clears throat> we'll do it. We'll make it happen. May have to send Pastor Jan after some Kentucky Fried Chicken or something. <clears throat> Many a bird has given its life for the ministry. <laughs> That's why we call it the gospel bird. <laughs> I got a feeling I have a peanut gallery right over that direction today. <clears throat> I know. Uh, Days like today are just um, almost like sweet and sour chicken, you know, uh, part sweet, part sour, because today is a very um, special day honoring our, our fallen soldiers, and uh, we're going to talk a, a little bit more about that. Um, there, there is a sobriety to it. But at the same time, there is a glorious uh, point of victory. <clears throat> We're going to address both of that today. Um, also, uh, our country is facing probably some of the most critical things that we've seen since Watergate. Um, just in case you needed somebody to tell you, our country's in a mess. <clears throat> the moral compass of many has just gone wacky. And uh, leaders in our government making some very foolish, unwise decisions at best. <clears throat> so we need to pray into that can't let it get heavy on us, and um, <clears throat> I certainly hope and pray that none of you would ever step into the role of being disrespectful or railing on any uh, person of a, well, anybody. Um, there's a, there's a, a Baptist church that makes it their mission to rail on our government and rail on people, even protesting their funerals and protesting high school graduations. I'm just telling you straight up, that is not of God. And I have the right, just as you do, to examine the fruit of somebody's life. And it's one of the biggest misinterpretations of the scriptures says not to judge you are to judge now, I don't have time to explain all that but you are to have righteous judgment and I judge it as false at the very best it's like Saul of Tarsus who was so deluded and so deceived in his mind that he killed Christians in the name of God. And God had to knock him off his donkey on the road to Damascus, and he was changed from Saul to Paul. And the people that have chosen to rail on others in the name of God are deceived, deluded. <clears throat> And God help us, though, that we never fall into that trap of railing or speaking disrespectfully. Even, you know, sometimes I 
joke around a little bit about the White House and the outhouse, and it's hard to tell the difference. But I have to be careful with that because the Washington is our leaders. And the Bible says, pray for those that have rule over you. And, um, and we have to be careful with that. <clears throat> the other thing on our hearts today is all of the wicked weather that's gone across our country. Some of you woke up this morning and discovered that in Austin, Texas, over 200 people had to be rescued as flash floods just swept through that city. Had to rescue a man off the top of one of the little sheds in the middle of a golf course. That's huge. I mean, water. can you imagine you're out there playing golf and all of a sudden you're in 12 feet of water? That's a water hazard if I ever heard one right there. <clears throat> An entire apartment complex had to be evacuated, some hundred people out of that thing. And of course, last week with all of the um, tragedies in Oklahoma, thank God that the death toll was as low as it was. That was a miracle. <clears throat> And several of you have mentioned that you would like to do something. And uh, so I'm going to tell you how. But in the midst of all that tragedy, you see the resiliency of people. You see people that are full of faith. Isn't it refreshing to hear people over and over again say that we prayed or we just hung on and cried out to God? And I don't know if you saw this little video or not, but they were interviewing this little grandmother who literally had locked herself in her bathroom, was sitting on the toilet holding her little dog, and the tornado literally ripped her house to shreds, literally shredded her house like a lawnmower. And in that process, knocked her around in the bathroom, and she lost her dog. And they are interviewing her live on Skynet television, and watch what happens. I was holding my dog. I was sitting on the stool holding my dog. This was the game plan all through the years, uh, you know, to go in that little bathroom. And uh, the electric never went off because the electric went off in the bathroom about the same time I felt the stool come up out of the floor. And I rolled around a little bit and when it stopped, I was right there, that presto cooker is what I saw. You were lying there in the uh -huh. rubble. And I never lost consciousness, uh, and I hollered for my little dog, and he didn't answer, it didn't come, so I know he's in here somewhere. Mm -hmm. But uh, it just, I mean, it, it was there and it was gone. Just, uh, just no time. And uh, then it was light, and I thought, well, I'm okay. And I had some stuff on top of me, and I started wiggling. Are you able to comprehend yet what happened here? I know exactly what happened here. Exactly. <laughs> and, uh, what do you, I mean, what do you, what do you think of all this? This is your neighborhood. I can't imagine. This is life in the big city. The dog, the dog. The dog. Hi, puppy. The dog. Oh. Oh, Kathy. Oh, Kathy. Bless you. And help me. Help me. Oh, Kathy. Oh.
Well, I thought God just answered one prayer to let me be okay. He answered both of them. Because this is my life, my Poor little thing. Poor little I'm so glad. Now, is that a miracle or what? <laughs> this morning in the offering, if any of you do want to contribute to um, the disaster relief, we actually have boots on the ground. Um, part of our denomination is an organization for disaster relief called Convoy of Hope. And um, they, they go literally all over the United States. They've been over in Tampa. They've been different places uh, wherever there's been a disaster. And Convoy of Hope is literally on the ground there within hours. They were there. And so if you want to contribute, just, um, um, Elsie, what can they put on the offering envelope? Just Oklahoma? Would that... Dis yeah, disaster, anything like that. And um, we, are, we are going to look into it, but I saw on the news the other day a Christian businessman has agreed to match dollar for dollar everything we give up to a million dollars. And that will go, we're going to look up and see how we can connect it, but he wants to to give to Convoy of Hope as well. So we'll try our best to see if we can connect with that guy. But uh, for sure, every dollar that you give for that, uh, just mark it there on your envelope as missions or other, something like that, and just say, I want this portion to go to uh, disaster relief, and we'll do that. Thank you for being faithful in your tithes and offerings. I think it's important that you know that all the bills in this house are paid. We don't owe anybody anything. In other words, we're not behind on anything. And God has protected us for over 40 years. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I counseled with a pastor just two weeks ago, and she's three months behind in her mortgage. Uh, I just, you know, talked to another business person last week behind a year. And here we have never in 40 years been late or had to miss a payment on purpose. We did a couple times by accident, but, <laughs> you know, not on purpose. Come on. God is faithful. And uh, right now we have just odds and ends on credit cards and, and the house payment on this building. Uh, but we don't have debt elsewhere. And uh, we've paid cash for everything. And, and we've, we need to uh, repaint our building. We need to uh, do the parking lot. We're looking at about $30,000 of just maintenance stuff that needs to be done. And if everybody in our church would do their part, I'd never have to say a word about the offering. So I just encourage all of you. Some of you haven't picked up the concept of putting God first in your finances. And I just encourage you to do that. And your home, this is your home church, you need to take care of your home so that we can repair some things, fix some things. And God has given our church a wonderful gift, and that's Brad Yule. And uh, <clears throat> Brad spent the last couple of days with 102 temperature. And I called him and I said, Brad, the kitchen air condition is out. The sign's flaking out on me. I said, just tell me what to do and I'll do it. And he gave me a few instructions. And I went out and pushed this button and reset that button and everything else and it still didn't work. And uh, 
he comes down here after being in bed for two days with 102 temperature and he has it all fixed in, in an hour. Just irritates me to no end. It's an irritating gift. But he can just fix anything. He'll, he'll climb up on the roof and plug it in and go and saves our church thousands of dollars. But even with all of that, we still, there are things we have to, have to repair or paint or do. And, and uh, just thank you for doing your part. Just taking care of business here at the house. Amen? Lord, bless this offering right now. And Lord, I speak into every person's finances, their, their ministries, their investments, their activities. And Lord, I pray over every person, every family in this house, even our guests and friends that have joined us today, those watching on the internet, anyone that has been faithful to put you first in their finances, I pray that you will open up the windows of heaven and pour them out a blessing. They'll not have room enough to receive it in Jesus' name. And I pray over the next few weeks you'll cause people to put in just an extra few dollars to cover the convoy of hope and ministering to those precious people in Oklahoma. In Jesus' name, let every need be met. Amen? Amen. God bless you as you give. Would you welcome Miss Deborah with the Ministry of Announcements? Well, good morning, Ignited. You are a blessed people, beloved of the Lord, and he's opened up the windows this morning, and he's pouring out blessings upon you, so open your hearts to receive. Right now... And it started at 9 this morning, going through to 1 this afternoon. We have the Florida Blood Mobile parked outside. So if you want to bless someone else with the gift of life, gift of blood, go on out and donate this morning. Tonight, we're going to have our Ignited Country Cook-In, an exciting time. Please run the video. So put on your jeans, put on your cowboy boots, and come on in this afternoon at 6 o'clock. And um, as you saw, Country Bobby Bowen is going to be ministering in, in song and music. And we'll have comedian Justin Fennell. And you also saw him on the video. So it's going to be a great time. Pastor Jan still needs volunteers for this event because we need a setup crew, servers, breakdown people. So after the service, will you please see Pastor Jan, who's sitting right here in the white, thank you, and um, let her know how you can be of service. Next Saturday, a special couple is going to be having a yard sale, and that's Vanjie and Ted Mankin, and Vanjie and Ted are going to go to Nicaragua, and they're going to be ministering to the children there. So will you please come in next Saturday to the garage sale? It's, from, it's June the 1st from 8 in the morning until 2 in the afternoon. Look around, see what you want to buy. They also said if you want to bring things to donate to be sold, you may do that also to help them with this trick to Nicaragua because they told me they want to have something to leave there for the churches and for the children when they go. So that's what we are going to be donating towards, something to leave there for the children. 
Shoes for kids. If you noticed in several places in the hallway as well in the, as in the lobby, we have some large cardboard boxes that say shoes for kids. And what we need is your old shoes, used shoes, not your new shoes. Put them in the box. Then we have special teams that are going to totally take the shoes apart and renovate them. I don't know how it's going to be done, but it sounds exciting to me. It's these people's ministries. And then what they'll do is they will send those shoes to needy people. And for all the shoes that are sent, new shoes are going to be donated by other people for people here in the Florida area, for our children here in the area who are in need. So bring in your used shoes, and they're going to go to help others. Do we have any visitors with us this morning? Please raise your hand. Well, great. Welcome our visitors. We're so glad to have you here at Ignited Church. And the ushers are handing out a packet. If you fill out the little card, fill out the, that's um, in the packet, the back of the card, take it to the bookstore, which is in the lobby, and you will receive a free gift. We're just so pleased to have you. We also want to welcome you who have tuned in on the webcast. We're always so glad when you've decided to become a part of our congregation. And we just want to know the blessings that we pronounce here also are your blessings. So receive them, open your heart, and see what God will do for you right there in your home. Bulletins, ushers now have the bulletins. And if you haven't received the bulletin, for the month of June, raise your hand. There are a lot of exciting things going on here at United Church, and we can't always announce them all, but you will see them in the bulletin, and also you'll know ahead of time so you can mark them on your calendar for next month what will be going on here at Ignited. Well... Get ready for the rest of the service as we stand and welcome our pastor back. Hallelujah. I am, thank you, God bless you, you may be seated. I am very, very excited about today. This is going to be fun tonight. And... Um, uh, Justin Fennell, the comedian, has just returned from Grand Old Opry, and uh, he has his roots in this church. He grew up or, or was here in our church for a long time and has now made it big. He's all over the nation. He'll be here tonight. And uh, Bobby Bowen is a fine, fine Christian country singer. So uh, go pick up a couple of neighbors and bring them tonight. Amen? And... Uh, we're going to have a, have a good old time tonight. How many have cowboy boots that you're going to be wearing tonight? Good. I'm, I've got some really nice ones. You'll like mine. i got some uh, cherry-colored lizard skin boots. Boy, I'm, I'm going to be styling. Of course, tomorrow I'll need a foot massage, but tonight I will be styling. Amen. Uh, we're going to have a good time. Amen. Um, what I would like to do right now is I would like for all of our veterans uh, that are with us today, all of our veterans, would you come and stand right here across the front? Would you do that? All of our veterans, would you come? Um, <clears throat> Hallelujah. <clears throat> Hallelujah. <clears throat> Captain Williams is still uh, serving in the military or any of the others still serving? Anybody? Okay. Would you do the honors and bring the American flag? Uh, up here. I want to post it up here. And um, maybe one of you can go. Uh, Jamie, why don't you go with him and bring the stand? Let him bring the colors. And 
how many in our congregation you have lost a loved one, someone really close to you, maybe a relative or maybe even a close friend, you have lost them. Let's post it right, right there where Jamie is, yeah. I looked it up to be sure. It's always over my right shoulder. And that's, see, I, I made sure. And we're supposed to have the blue prominently displayed. I, ch I, I checked at one o'clock this morning on Google. <laughs> so be sure. But you've lost a loved one in a war, um, in military service. How many? Raise your hand. I had two uncles shot down in World War II. How many? Just keep your hand raised. Look around. Several here. All right. Um, how many in our congregation you have a loved one in the military serving right now? Look around the room. That's something. Uh, Elsie has a daughter stationed where up in Washington and um, Helen's daughter Terry uh, returned from uh, she was a captain in the chaplaincy program the Air Force has just returned now and has gone into civilian life in the last couple of years but we prayed for Terry how many years <laughs> many many years in our church she was on the list and um, I think it's important for us to, to remember. And um, I've got a little video. It's a couple of minutes long, and uh, I want to play it for you. But I think uh, I, I want to pray over uh, our families, our military families, and over our veterans. And I, I don't see... Um, uh, Frank here this morning. He was a wounded. He was wounded in uh, in Vietnam. How many of you in, down front here? You served in Vietnam. Let me see your hand. The Vietnam vets. Any from Korean War? Korean War. Okay. And um, how about Desert Storm or Desert Shield or Iraq in the Middle East? Okay, several. And. Um, uh, there's all kinds of associated traumas with that for them and their families. And I want us to reach out to them and to those that were around you that raised your hand. And we just want to love on them a little bit this morning. Is that good? So, Heavenly Father, first of all, we say thank you for these men and women that have served. We, we thank you, Lord. And Lord, we just pray today for all of the families that have been impacted by their service to our country. Like in my case, my, my two uncles being shot down in World War II, I, I never met them. I, I didn't know them, but I've heard the stories and sat at family dinners and we talked. And there's so many here, even in the room today, or watching on the webcast, that have suffered or endured loss or separation. And I just pray that this morning will be a time of healing, a time of, of restoration, a time of renewal, a time of honor. We give honor today to whom honor is due. And we say thank you, Lord, that our country is free. Thank you that we do have this wonderful country built on biblical principles. And we pray that you'll give us the wisdom to keep it that way. In Jesus' name, amen. One more time, give them a big God bless you. <laughs> Ladies, gentlemen, you can return to your seats. And uh, you may be seated. And Daniel, let's show this video. I think it will help introduce my message today. If we look to the answer as to why for so many years we achieved so much, prospered as no other people on earth, it was because here in this land, 
We unleash the energy and individual genius of man to a greater extent than has ever been done before. Freedom and the dignity of the individual have been more available and assured here than in any other place on earth. The price for this freedom at times has been high, but we have never been unwilling to pay that price. Those who say that we're in a time when there are no heroes, they just don't know where to look. The sloping hills of Arlington National Cemetery with its row upon row of simple white markers, bearing crosses or stars of David, they add up to only a tiny fraction of the price that has been paid for our freedom. Each one of those markers is a monument to the kind of hero I spoke of earlier. Their lives ended in places called Bellow Wood, the Argonne, Omaha Beach, Salerno, and halfway around the world on Guadalcanal, Tarawa, Pork Chop Hill, the Chosin Reservoir, and in a hundred rice paddies and jungles of a place called Vietnam. Under one such marker lies a young man, Martin Treptow, who left his job in a small town barber shop in 1917 to go to France with the famed Rainbow Division. There on the Western Front, he was killed trying to carry a message between battalions under heavy artillery fire. We're told that on his body was found a diary. On the flyleaf, under the heading, My Pledge, he had written these words. America must win this war. Therefore, I will work, I will save, I will sacrifice, I will endure. I will fight cheerfully and do my utmost as if the issue of the whole struggle depended on me alone. We must realize that no arsenal or no weapon in the arsenals of the world is so formidable as the will and moral courage of free men and women. It is a weapon our adversaries in today's world do not have. It is a weapon that we as Americans do have. Let that be understood by those who practice terrorism and prey upon their neighbors. As for the enemies of freedom, those who are potential adversaries, they will be reminded that peace is the highest aspiration of the American people. We will negotiate for it, sacrifice for it. We will not surrender for it now or ever. We are Americans. I'd like to encourage you to open your Bibles to Exodus chapter 3. Memorial Day can be traced back to the 1800s when they gathered every year to honor this nearly 600,000 men that died in the Civil War. Just to give you a little perspective, 116,000 men died in World War I. 400,000 died in World War II. 54,000 died in the Korean War. 90,000 died in Vietnam, 
1,900 died in Desert Storm. 4,400 died in Operation Iraqi Freedom. And 2,200 died in Operation Enduring Freedom, which basically is the wars currently going on in Afghanistan. All total, more than 1.2 million men and women have died fighting for our freedom. You saw images a moment ago on the screen of our cemetery there in Washington. They average 28 funerals a day. A day. Nearly 7 thousand a year. Today we have this beautiful church service. Tonight we're going to have a celebration, a new version of Dinner on the Grounds. When I was researching Memorial Day, oftentimes churches would have Dinner on the Grounds. People would bring a quilt or a blanket and spread it out and everybody would kind of bring pot luck. <laughs> How many have ever been to one of those? You were lucky if you didn't get sick <laughs> from either overeating or maybe the food wasn't prepared quite properly. We're going to have a country music concert. Monday will be filled with Parades and ceremonies, and some will be going off to the beach. Of course, today wouldn't be Memorial Day without the Charlotte Coca-Cola 600 NASCAR fans. Of course, none of them are here today. <laughs> Not looking anywhere in particular. The good news, though, is that Willie from Duck Dynasty prayed the opening prayer for NASCAR this weekend, so that's a praise of the Lord. <laughs> Memorial Day is not just another three-day weekend. Some have even complained that the celebrations and the picnics and the parties and the events have caused people to even forget the meaning of Memorial Day. This morning, I really feel that the Lord wants me to say to you, remember the price. Remember those who paid it. And remember why. One of the first memorials that was set up in the Bible, and by the way, you'll be fascinated, I think, by this study. Sometimes just go to one of your favorite commentaries or they have them on like BibleGateway.com. It's free. It's on the internet. And just do a word search on memorial and you'll find that God uses that word throughout the Bible. And one of the first times memorial is used was by God himself and he established a memorial in Exodus chapter 3. This is where God appears to Moses in the burning bush and Moses asks the question, what is your name? Who am I going to tell the Israelite rulers has sent me? Who am I going to tell Pharaoh has sent me? Verse 14, God declares, I am who I am. Say this to the children of Israel. I am has sent you. God also said to Moses, Say this to the people of Israel. Yahweh, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, 
has sent me to you. This is my eternal name, my name to remember for all generations, a name to memorialize. Remember this event. Remember what I have said to you. Verse 16. Now go, call all the elders of Israel. Tell them the Lord God of your ancestors has appeared to you. Tell them, I have been watching closely. I see how the Egyptians are treating you. I have promised to rescue you from your oppression. I will lead you to a land flowing with milk and honey. The elders of Israel will accept your message. Now listen, this is God speaking to Moses. And you and I know that at First, the Israelites did not receive the message. But listen, the elders of Israel will accept your message. Then you and the elders must go to the king of Egypt and tell him, the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, has met with us. So please let us take a three-day journey into the wilderness to offer sacrifices to the Lord our God. But I know that the king of Egypt will not let you go unless a mighty hand forces him. So I will raise my hand and strike the Egyptians, performing all kinds of miracles among them. Then at last he will let you go. And I will cause the Egyptians to look favorably on you, and they will give you gifts when you go so that you will not leave empty-handed And every Israelite woman will ask for articles of silver and gold, fine clothing from her Egyptian neighbors and from the foreign women in their houses, and you will dress your sons and daughters with these, stripping the Egyptians of their wealth. If we can remember the price And we can remember those who paid it. And we can remember the why. We can avoid mistakes that like the Israelites who did not listen to what God had said. Literally wandered for 40 years in the wilderness and lost their lives. They lost their way because they did not memorialize what God had said. And look at America today. To a significant degree, we have lost our way. We have forgotten. How many under 40 even know what Memorial Day is about? Will our children and our grandchildren know what this weekend is about? It's interesting. I saw a quick news report this morning, and they were talking about Memorial Day weekend, and and they were talking about what it was about, and they were wrong. They didn't know. This was a national news organization, and they were talking about, today we, we want to remember all of our veterans that have served. That's not what Memorial Day is about. We honor the veterans today, but this is not Veterans Day. This is Memorial Day. We remember those that paid the ultimate price. This is about remembering the price. And yes, there was absolutely a price paid by every veteran's family. There's many that were disabled and and injured and etc but the real foundation of memorial day was those that paid the ultimate price do our children really know who paid it and many many in our country today have forgotten why Had the children of Israel memorialized the words of God that were given at the burning bush and listened carefully and judged everything that was happening to them with Pharaoh, 
to crossing the Red Sea, to going through the wilderness, even coming up to the steps of Jericho, had they remembered why they would have gone in. But they didn't. And they lost their way, and the same thing will happen to us as Americans today and to the body of Christ in general if we don't memorialize what God has promised in his word. We've got to. We have to fight with everything in us to not let ourselves or anyone else forget. Thus saith the Lord. One of the next memorials that you'll find in the Bible when you're searching through is Passover. And it happened during the release of the Israelites from Pharaoh where they put the blood on the door. And God says, make this situation, this ceremony, this this night to be remembered forever. That's why even today, even secular Jews will still celebrate Passover. But most of them, it's just another three-day weekend. Do you know what Passover is about? Do you understand? Do your children and your grandchildren know? Because even though we're not Israelites, even though we're not Hebrews, we still have been grafted in and we've been adopted and we're part of the family of Abraham. And though we don't have to follow the rules and the regulations we better understand our family history jesus was a jew he wasn't a christian (laughs) our lord and savior celebrated these memorials and they were there established by god for a reason we better know that easter is about the passion of the cross and not Easter bunnies and Easter eggs. We better know that Christmas is about the virgin birth, supernatural, miraculous birth, and not just the birth of a famous man or a great prophet. We better know he was fully God and fully man. You need to remember that at Christmas these are memorial days we can't forget the price we can't forget who paid it and we can't forget the why as a church we cannot forget these memorials whether it be for our beloved country, or whether it be for our beloved book and the God of the book. As a nation, we cannot forget why. One in point two million men and women have died for the right to even fly this flag In this house today, we can't go through this weekend and forget the why. Just moments ago when we were watching the little videos and we saw Captain Williams post this flag, it it stirs patriotism. If it doesn't, you ought to smack yourself. You better do some reading. You better watch some YouTube videos or something that will help you to come back to the place that we, we are proud to be Americans. And not a negative pride like the Bible talks about. You know, God resists the proud, gives his grace to the humble. That, that's a, there's a difference between a selfish pride and having pride in your country. And even if there are those here from other countries today, I hope you understand 
that this is a patriotic Sunday and we are proud to be Americans. No, not ashamed of that. And when we see the red, white, and blue, even in parades tomorrow, or even posted here on this platform, it ought to bring some tears to your eyes. It ought to just, you ought to get some butterflies in your stomach. God help us if this flag ever goes by and it doesn't help us remember. We've got to remember the price. We've got to remember who paid it. And we've got to remember why. When we see the cross, when you see a cross on the side of a building or a or a church or up on the steeple or you see movies like The Passion or something, it, it, it ought to stir something in you. The price. Who paid it and why? Why do you think that the enemy, the antichrist spirit, has done everything they can to tear down our memorial? They don't want crosses. They don't even want crosses on the graves in Arlington Cemetery. They don't want crosses up on a hillside because memorials are important. That's why we fight for them. That's why we fight to still say the Pledge of Allegiance in our school. They're trying to get rid of the Pledge of Allegiance and the flag out of our schools. Don't want to offend anybody. Come on! We need to offend some people. Glory to God. Christ came to bring a sword. Can even divide families. But see, that's why you need to remember the price, remember who paid it, and remember why. We're so worried about offending people and people's feelings. What about those that died for this flag and what it stands for? What about their feelings? Come on, somebody. That's why we cannot forget. One of the whys is, is our freedom. And that they've taken the Ten Commandments out. They've taken Bible out of the school. They've taken prayers out of the school. Because they didn't understand why. We're the greatest nation in the world because there's a reason. I saw one of the newscasters the other day had a nighttime shot of North and South Korea. Did you, have you seen this? Everything north at night is virtually blacked out. Everything South Korea, you can see lights everywhere. And at first, if you don't get it, you know, you're wondering, why are they showing us this picture? What's the big deal? The big deal is, is that socialism and communism takes from the people and destroys a country. That's why North Korea is black at night. South Korea is flourishing. It has energy. It has life. It has industry. It, its people are free and there's light. See, you've got to understand the price and you've got to understand the why. We put markers on a grave to remember. You see families all the time, families and friends will, will keep a little memorial on a highway where their loved one had died. Why? They don't want you to forget 
and they don't want to forget. Memorials are important. We have too many that have died for our freedom. We've had too many that have died for the freedom of others. Isn't it interesting how much of Europe has kind of look down their nose at us in regards to dealing with terrorism, but they got blood in their streets this weekend. And it's helped them to understand there is a price for freedom. And there are those that have given their lives for that freedom, and they better remember why. America has shed its blood all over this world to help others live free. And then they mock us and try to look down their socialistic nose at us. You ought to get some righteous indignation. After 911, oh, America got all fired up and we rallied and, you know, people joined the military. Everybody started flying flags. But the memorial at 911 doesn't seem to be enough for us to remember that we're still in a war. Our president's trying to shut that down right now. Well, we just kind of change things now, you know. We just don't need <laughs> He's forgotten. He doesn't have that ache in his stomach for our country. He doesn't get butterflies when the flag is flown. Why? Because he's forgotten, or worse yet, was educated by fools who never knew. And you need to understand that. It has nothing to do with race. Absolutely nothing. If anything, and you've heard me say it from this pulpit, I am very proud to be an American And I'm proud that I have gotten to see the day when an African-American was honored as a president of the United States. And Colin Powell and Condoleezza Rice, I am proud to be an American. In my lifetime, I've seen it. Right here in this city, Munn Park, you can go there today, and there were two water fountains. I saw them. I was there, 10 years old when we moved here. Whites only, Negroes, in my lifetime, and I ain't that old. And now to have African Americans in leadership positions in our country, I'm proud to be an American. So don't you dare tell me it's a matter of race. We have one of the finest mayors we have ever had in this in this city, Mayor Gal Fields. African-American. He's a personal friend of mine. I have his cell phone. He has mine. So don't tell me. It's a matter of memorial. It's a matter of knowing why. And you need to understand the why. And I know there's racism is still alive. I understand it. I hate it. And it ought to make turn your stomach. Don't let it ever happen in this house. (laughs) Just saying. But you and I have got to have a fear of God in us because of the memorial of the price, who paid it, and why. You say, well, I can't tell. Are you talking, you know, spiritual, or are you talking 
patriotism. You, I'm talking, of, it's all together. Now, us men, we like to compartmentalize, and women, life is like spaghetti. It all just blends together. So the women know what I'm talking about. You men got to wake up. It isn't compartmentalized. It's part of it. In God we trust is still on our currency. The Judeo-Christian precepts, laws, are what our, our whole country is founded upon. And we can't forget that. It's for freedom that they shed their blood. And it wasn't freedom from religion. It was freedom for religion. It was freedom from government intervention. Anything that the government does. To harm us or take away our choices or is wrong. In many cases, it's flat out sin. And you need to be, you need to have a measure of fortitude and backbone where you can say, it's wrong. I've been totally shocked and surprised that our liberal friends have even recognized the wickedness of what the IRS did and what the Department of Justice did with the the tapping of the phones of our news reporters. I've been surprised, pleasantly surprised, that they're they've got a little righteous indignation in them. But that's what we need to have. You need to understand. This is not a game. This is not a life of tolerance. Let's all just get along, Rodney King says. Can't we all just get along? No, we need to bring to justice those that are doing evil. We need to correct those things. But there is no excuse for for taking the law into your own hands and, and doing violence And no excuse for us railing on people. Amen. The reason why people died was for the freedom of the press. The freedom to bear arms. To own a gun. Well, I I think guns kill people. No, they don't. Wicked people kill people. More people are killed by cars and automobiles than are ever killed in wars. So what are you going to do? Take cars away from everybody? Amen? Freedom to speak our opinion. Do you know if I were ministering today in Canada, I could not even read Romans chapter 1 or I'd be thrown in jail for hate speech. And it's coming to America if we don't stop it. You need to understand, your pastor isn't just blowing smoke this morning. I'm not just trying to get everybody all whooped up. I'm trying to tell you the truth. No, I haven't been watching too much Rush Limbaugh or (laughs) Sean Hannity or Bill O'Reilly. Sometimes I feel like they cross the line and I feel like they get into railing. Sometimes I just turn them off. I I don't like that. But I want to listen to truth. Amen. I don't want to get all wrapped up in conspiracy theories and all that kind of stuff. But I do want people to know that the truth will set you free. And I want to just declare this so that you can hear it from my lips. God loves homosexuals. God loves murderers. God loves Jody Arias. 
God loved Hitler. It's not his plan that any should perish. He offers eternal life to all of them. And we have to be careful that we don't rail on a certain person or, or start passing judgment on a certain person. We have to be careful about that. But we are to judge. And there is a place and there is a process that has to be gone through. And you have to declare what it is. But the whole issue of homosexuality is not an issue of civil rights. Has, it's two different animals. And when you hear people talk like that, you just need to declare it right out of your mouth. That's a lie. You do not have a right to marry anybody you want to. That's not a right. God created Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. There's biblical principles. But at the same time, I don't need to go invading somebody's house to see how they're living and their private lives and all that kind of stuff. But I don't have to give them legal rights. I think the Boy Scouts are in trouble. I think they're going to they're facing some big trouble. And and I'm ashamed that those leaders that should have had some background and backbone and foundation of principles that many have have suffered great persecution they should have told the world to keep out of their business and paid whatever price they needed to to keep the thing pure and clean. It's part of the scout's honor and the scout's pledge. Of course, you know, it's easy for me to say I wasn't a scout, but I was a royal ranger. Bless God. One of the highest level went through leadership training one of the original members of the Frontiersman Camping Fraternity, I got medals. I never achieved the gold medal of achievement just because I was, I didn't care. <laughs> I was a teenager, whatever. <laughs> but I can still build a campfire today, glory to God. Built one last night. It was cold last night. I went out in the backyard and built a bonfire down by the lake and put this sermon together down by the bonfire. It's probably why it's loaded. But anyway. <laughs> you and I can't cut pieces of the scripture out because we don't like them. We got to deal with every scripture in the Bible. got to deal with lying did you see all of those guys witnessing this week saying well I answered all the questions truthfully no they did not they lied through their teeth but they have become distorted in their thinking that well I can twist I can spin Because lying has become the norm. And the word of God very plainly says, beware when people say that bad is good and good is bad. Beware. It ought to alert us. I'm almost done. Some of you are getting nervous. One of the things the Bible says is to love your neighbor can't cut that out of the Bible and some of our neighbors are not lovable <laughs> and
And the Bible even goes beyond that and says, love your enemies. We got to deal with that. There's scriptures in the Bible I don't like. That's one of them. But you've got to deal with it. You've got to get your heart right. And you've got to have the Word of God memorialized in your brain so you don't waver from the path. It's why we have a memorial day so we never, never, never forget the price, who paid it, and why so we won't deviate. You cannot break God's laws in order to emphasize or enforce the laws of God that you feel are important. You can't break one law to enforce another. It's like somebody getting it in their head that they can kill an abortion doctor. Just let's go get a sniper rifle and pick them off. That's breaking God's law in order to enforce another. You can't do that. You have to understand that God has given us law enforcement, and he's actually said it's him that put it in place. Some of the greatest scriptures in our Bible were written by men and women who were in prison, or who were living in a despot society? Prophet Daniel went through what? Two, three foreign kings equivalent to being a wise counsel to a Saddam Hussein. Can you imagine? And he writes in our Bible. Joseph was the prince of Egypt, the most wicked, the most powerful country in history until Romans comes along. And then Christ was living in the time of Rome. The apostle Paul was put in prison by the Romans. And what's even worse is he was a Roman citizen. So come on. America is not like Rome or Egypt. Matter of fact, interestingly, I was reading an article this week where the Arabs will tell you that the freest place that they live today is in Israel. Israel gives Arabs more freedom than any other country. They have more people in the Israeli government that are Muslim than we have here in America. I question the wisdom of that. (laughs) All right, turn with me to 2 Corinthians 4. I'm going to conclude with a Memorial Day sermon that was preached by the Apostle Paul to the church of Corinth who had no clue the corinthians had no clue they had no moral compass they were the equivalent of the group that came into christianity right off the streets had no history had no concept of religion no concept of god it it, it would be like somebody moving from congo or zimbabwe moving to america and having No concept of our history, our culture, nothing. And the Apostle Paul is telling them, here's the price, here is who paid it, and this is why. 2 Corinthians 4.4 We preach that Jesus Christ is Lord, and we ourselves are servants. For Christ's sake. Verse 6. For God who said let there be light in the darkness. Has made the light to shine in our hearts. So that we could know the glory of God. That is seen in the face of Christ. 
We now have this light shining in our hearts, but we ourselves are like fragile clay jars containing this great treasure. This makes it clear that our great power is from God and not ourselves. We are pressed on every side by troubles, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but we are not driven to despair. We are hunted down, but we are never abandoned by God. We get knocked down, but we are not destroyed. Through suffering, our bodies continue to share in the death of Christ so that the life of Jesus may also be seen in our bodies. Yes, we live under constant danger of death because we serve Jesus. So that the life of Christ will be evident even in our dying body. So we live in the face of death. But this has resulted in eternal life for you. We continue to preach because we have the same kind of faith. The psalmist said, I believe in God, so I speak. We know that God, who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead, will also raise us with Christ and present us to himself together with you. All of this is for your benefit. And as God's grace reaches more and more people, there will be great thanksgiving and God will receive more and more glory. That is why we never give up. Though our bodies are dying and our spirits are being renewed every day. For our present troubles are small and they won't last very long. But they will produce for us a glory that has vastly outweighed them and will last forever. So, we don't look at the troubles we can see now. Rather, we fix our gaze on things that cannot be seen. For the things we see now will soon be gone. But the things that cannot be seen will last forever. Let's stand. Father, I take this sword of King David handed to his son, King Solomon, and we say, Son of David, protect our land. May the sword of the Lord always protect America. And any and every country that even attempts to serve you, to give their country to you. We declare and decree this day that America still is a country based on biblical foundations, a righteous, godly heritage. Loves everybody. Gives freedom to all. But they've got to obey the rules and the principles of this land. We pray that you'll right the wrongs. You'll expose racism, injustice, greed. You'll expose evil. God, purge 
impurity from our land. Give us the grace to know how to do that. Purge from our land Satanism and wickedness. Show us how to do it. Give us righteous wisdom. Purge from our land communism and socialism. And God help us never to trust in capitalism. But to trust what the word of God says. To always put you first in our finances. Put you first to serve other people in righteousness. And I pray, Lord God, that you'll anoint evangelists to flood America, that we would have a Holy Ghost, sin-killing, sky-busting, gully-washer revival that will just flood our country with your grace and your mercy so we can return to The why. The blood that was shed by men and women for the last several hundred years so that we can live as free men. Not controlled or dictated by our government. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just before I dismiss you, Georgia has something from the Lord. What will you stand for, says the Lord? You must stand for something, and I am looking for those who will stand with me. This is a day of standing. Stand for righteousness and peace. Stand for truth and victory. I am planting your feet on higher ground in the spirit. I am taking you to a new level of warfare that will give you access to greater sensitivity and discernment. If you stand with me, you shall not be moved when the storms of adversity come. I shall plant your feet on the rock that cannot be moved. Stand with me, says God. My word is the only place that cannot be shaken. It will endure forever. The promises I have given are sure, and you must stand on what I have spoken, even in your darkest hour. There is a standing place that cannot be shaken. I have given you a shield and a sword. They will protect you when the enemy comes. These weapons are to be used when you stand. You will not run from danger when you learn how to stand in the evil day. Fight the fight of faith. Your mind wants to fear, but there is no fear in love. If you love me, you will stand with me, and you will see the day of victory in the land. You will stand and not be moved when you stand for righteousness and truth. Stand in the light and do not hide in darkness. Cleanse your hearts from fear. This is the day of the revealing of the army of God. I am arising to do battle against the lies and wickedness of those deceived by pride and greed, says the Lord. Stand in truth. Prepare your hearts to praise. Begin to prophesy to yourself and arise with my spirit within you. Lift up your shield and wield your sword, for the day of victory is here. I have empowered your faith to a new level, and your praise will be the evidence of your victory. Today you will stand with the great ones who have gone before you. I will cause you to be brave and courageous in the day of battle. There is nothing that shall overtake you when you stand clothed with the armor of your Lord. I have given you the victory, and your mouth shall declare it, says the Lord. Hallelujah. With every head bowed and every eye closed, uh, just give me 15 seconds. I want to scan the audience. Is there anybody that's come here today that just needs to make things right with God? There's things that are just not right between you and God. I'm scanning the audience. Just wave at me. Catch, catch my attention. I'm about to pray for everybody, but I just want to know anybody here 
watching on the webcast here in the auditorium, just capture my attention in Jesus' name. All right. Father, bless them. Keep them. Make your face shine upon them. I pray that every one of us will walk in love. We'll never, ever be guilty of wickedness. That when we fall, when we falter, we will repent quickly. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And I pray that we will walk in love. Protect us and guard us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, look up here at me. Tonight, we're going to have a boatload of guests. All right? This, the congregation will probably be double what it is right now. So, I need you to be a committee of one to, to meet people that you've never met before, shake their hand, greet them, welcome them, and uh, let's have a lot of fun tonight, okay? And, and just make tonight a night of fun. That's what it's for, okay? It's not going to be a church service. We had enough melodrama here this morning. Amen. I, I'm sanguine. We got to have a party tonight. <laughs> so it's going to be a party. We're going to have fun. Amen? Amen. And those of you that could come back at 2 o'clock, Pastor Jan needs help doing the final preparations of the food and setting up of the room. And here's the plan, just so that you know, because the more people know the plan, the better. When you get here tonight, we're going to start serving you almost immediately because we want you to get through the line, eat, and get out of the way because hopefully the guests and visitors that are coming in off the streets and so forth will start filtering in around 6, 6.15, 6.30. And by the time you finish eating, you can give them your seat. And then you come out and become greeters and walk around and minister to people, love on people all around, okay? And then around 6.30, we've got some music videos and different things starting in here. And then about 10 till 7, we're going we're gonna to activate Justin Fennell, and he's going to have fun. He is the crazy. I'm telling you, the guy's out to lunch. You are going to laugh till your sides hurt. And then Bobby will come up after that, and we're just going to have a fun time tonight, okay? So um, wear your cowboy boots and your blue jeans and plaid shirts, whatever you got, all right? Cowboy hats will be permitted tonight, all right? Whatever, I want you to have fun. You may have some family or friends, bring them tonight. If we run out of food, we'll go to KFC, all right? So let's have fun tonight, amen? Is everybody happy with that? Now, one more thing. I need uh, any elders that are available, if you'll come forward. We have a, a couple of our school of ministry students that could not be in graduation this week. And we want to bless them. So any of our elders that are available, some of you have called. If you'll just come forward, we're going to pray over them. Any of our ISM graduates, if you would like to come too, and we're going to bless these two graduates that missed graduation, okay? God bless you. Go get your children, and we'll see you back. Volunteers at 2 o'clock, or some can volunteer to do cleanup afterwards.